Good morning. Good morning. We, we ask you to please sign the registration pads. And now Pastor Jeff has uh, announcements. I have a few announcements this morning, some things that are coming up real fast here in the church. This coming week, we have our council meeting, if you're part of council, that'll be on Wednesday night. Um, also, we also have um, our community dinner that will be happening on Wednesday night, um, and that's at uh, 5.30, right, if I'm right on that, um, or 5 o'clock, um, and it's our Thanksgiving service, our, our Thanksgiving uh, dinner, too. Um, we've been asking people to sign up in the back, so please sign up if you're planning on coming. But again, if you decide on the last minute you realize that you can come, we don't want you to stay home because you didn't sign up. So sign up if you can, um, but know that you are welcome to come. We're excited about that opportunity. The other thing that I want to draw attention to is tonight our youth group um, will be meeting. Um, we'll be meeting over at Christ Church. Uh, we are having a competition to see who is the better gender, the boys or the girls, tonight. And that's what we're going to be doing. So we'll be, we have a lot of activities that will be happening tonight. The guys and the girls will be making cookies to see who make the best cookies, um, hammering nails and doing all kinds of things throughout the church. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, Mark Rogowski is coming with some, some math problems so for the kids to do. So it will be a, uh, an interesting evening. Um, also, I wanted to let you know, we... We had our first game night a few weeks ago. Um, we're, we're planning on doing that on the first Friday night um, of every month to, have, to play games here at the church and to just have some fellowship. Um, we had a great time. We had more food than we could ever imagine eating, but um, we had a great time. So that's, that's at 6.30 that we meet. So plan, mark that on your, the first of the month on Friday night. If you like to play games and would like to spend some time with people and have some good food, um, plan on coming. I'll turn it back over to John. Thank you, John. The uh, other announcements this week is the... Uh, it's here. Oh, yeah, the Naomi Circle will meet on uh, Tuesday at 1 p.m., and also the, the uh, also the stockings are due. If you fail to bring your stock and make sure you get it in here early this week. And the nuts are here and they're in the in the library, so you can pick them up. <laughs> also, Christian the Christian Education Committee will meet on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, light up night uh, P Pastor Jeff invites everyone to, to stop at the parsonage for refreshments and watch the parade on Saturday uh, I'll, I'll leave all the other announcements uh, to you, and you to read at your own time now let us stand and, and and uh, sing our hymn number 110.
please uh, stand while we have the call of worship. We believe in you, for you have made this suffering a You have come to establish a kingdom of the poor and humble. Today we sing to you because you are alive. You have saved us. You have made us free. Amen. You may be seated. Now our uh, morning end. Thank you, choir. The kids want to come down.
They're already here. Hi, guys. I brought something with me today. Something, something that I'm a really afraid of. Do you know what it is? I don't like them either. Um, how many people like spiders here? Uh, we have a few that like spiders. You like spiders? Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scary. Um, there are things that we're, we're afraid of, aren't there? I'm afraid of cockroaches. Cockroaches, yeah, that can be pretty scary. Um, let's come down off of there right now, because I'm a little bit afraid you might fall. Um, but there are, are things that we're all afraid of. And you know what? Scripture tells us, um, I'm afraid of standing here alone. Um, <laughs> but it, Scripture tells us, here, here guys, why don't we sit, sit right here. Let's talk just a little bit. There, there are things that we're afraid of sometimes. And you know, God, Jesus even tells us in Scripture that there will be things like earthquakes and things to be afraid of, but that he is going to, to be there with us. And he's going to give us the strength, the words, and the patience, and, and he's going to be with us through it all. So there should be, in the midst of scary spiders like this one, we can know that Jesus is with us. You know what? There's a, there's a phrase from one of my favorite VeggieTale videos that says, God is bigger than the boogeyman. And God is indeed with us in times of scary things. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for being with us in times that are scary. Um, thank you for giving us your son so that we could have the peace during the scary times. Thank you for his words, even though there will be some bad things sometimes in our life, that he will always be with us. We pray this in your name. Thanks, you guys. Let's greet each other this morning with the love of Christ. Well, as we, go, as we go to the Lord in prayer today, let's prepare our hearts and pray together as we receive the word of God. 
Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship today um, in the midst of um, a rainy Sunday. We thank you for the light that you bring into our lives. And as we look at the scripture passage this morning, we pray that you would help us learn who you are through it. Help us to take this to our lives and help us to apply it. With my words, as feeble as sometimes they can be, we just pray that your light would shine through. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. The scripture passage this morning that we are looking at is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. Stand as we receive the Gospel message. <clears throat> when some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come will, when not one stone will left, be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be and, and what will be the sign and that this is about to take place? And he said, beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, <clears throat> and that the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify, so make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and, and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hate, hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so have you ever built a really tall tower out of blocks or, or maybe Legos um, just to see it get knocked down? Has that ever happened to you? You know, I've, I had a younger sister, and you, you know, if you have a younger sibling when you're growing up, they're always knocking down your towers. Um, you get it really built really tall, and then someone comes along and crash, it goes down. And if it's made out of cards, then it's even easier to take down. Or maybe you've worked on a project for a really long time just to see it get knocked down. Or maybe we've heard, worked really hard on something, and we think it's great just to see it get torn down or ripped apart by criticism. For we do that, don't we? We build structures and we give glory to them instead of God. The disciples this morning are talking about the temple and how great it is, how beautiful it is. And Jesus tells them what? That the temple will come down. When we look at the temple that Jesus is talking about, I have a picture up here on the screen, um, we need to know that it is a different place than the church is today. There was no separation of, of church and state, and the temple was not only a place of encouragement, it was also a place of politics. The temple at Jesus' time was the place to worship, but it was more, much more than that. The temple was not only the worship center of Hebrew culture, but it was also the art gallery, the concert plaza, and the poetry library. It was also a place at one time, a place where they actually believed that Yahweh or, or God existed. 
the temple was the heart of where Israelite worship was at. And life took place there. And it must have been, it must have been a beautiful place. It was always being worked on, and it was barely finished when the Roman soldiers came and destroyed it in 70 AD. Needless to say, all in all, again, it was a beautiful place at the time that Jesus w was alive. And it was a place where sacrifice was made, but it was also a place that was very, very holy. We know that Jesus was upset when the place was, was used in the wrong way. For Jesus was concerned with the heart. And did you see what Jesus said here in the passage? In verse 6 of, of chapter 21 in the Gospel of Luke, it says, As for these things that you see, the temple, the days will come will, where, when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. The temple was going to come down. The disciples were telling Jesus that the temple was a beautiful place, and Jesus tells them that it's going to come down. Now, maybe I'm reading the text wrong this morning, that the Spirit of God, it does not rely on a building or a church, that the message will go out even if the building does not exist. If the church did not exist, the message would still exist. So Jesus addresses the temple or the worship of the temple in our passage this morning. And Jesus talks about something else here. He talks about the future in Luke chapter 21. And he gave some warnings, ones that we should probably heed as well. For the end has not come yet. He says, watch out for false prophets. Jesus says, beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he. The time is near. Do not go after them. You know, there were many people or many false prophets at the time of Jesus claiming to be the Messiah. We, in 2013, have many things in our world trying to get us to believe that they are God, too. We should examine our lives and our checkbooks to see what we are worshiping. Jesus is talking about the future here in this passage, that there will be wars, and people will need to stand up for their faith. There will be earthquakes and plagues, and we will be betrayed at times. All in all, people, there will be signs and struggles, and we, need, we will need to be ready. So the building, the temple, was going to fall, and the end was near. A great message from Jesus today, isn't it? Kind of depressing, if you ask me a little bit. But is the message of Jesus always supposed to be happy? Is the message that things that we know right now will, this not, will not exist one day, this church, Franklin as we know it, the world as we know it, uh, will be some day changed? Is that really a bad message? Is it the best right now? And just like the temple, you know what, folks? This building, this church, will too crumble. Heck, it's crumbling right now. Take a look at the ceiling. But what about our future? What about the future? You know, there was a Doris Day song that was popular at one time before my time, but I remember hearing it, and it was called K Sera Sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not mine to see. K Sera Sera. Another way to say this is, is if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We cannot control the future, let it happen, or let it get us. Does the future scare you? Are you saving up for retirement? Or if you're retirement, if you are retired, do you sit around waiting for the end to come? And would you want to know the future if you could? You know, it would be kind of nice. You could play, you can make money on the stock market if you knew the future. But if everyone knew the future, you would not make any money. 
You know, I have some envelopes this morning. That they mysteriously showed up on my desk after some prayer time. And there's one for everyone here. Um, inside contains the future for each one of us. There is one for Jim Annenson here and for Marlene Richards and, and for Rick Leffert and John Huff. And here's one for Jeff Little. Let me look at it. Hmm. Oh, gosh. I really didn't want to know that. Anybody would want to go next and find out what their future is? Would you want to know your future? And if you had that opportunity, would it be news that you would want to hear? You know, some of us do know our future. Some of us are told that there is nothing left that the doctors can do for us, that some sickness is getting us, and we pray for those. But what if we did know? What about our future? You know, there, are, there is a certain worldview out there that we were all created with this thing called the Big Bang, and that we were all created by that, and it was just an accident. Now, it could have happened by a big bang, and that could have been the hand of God that caused it. But if it is, was an accident, and that some great cosmic experience created the world to begin, would it not be likely for the world to end in the same way? That we would turn into a freeze-dried piece of dust when our sun burns out, or maybe something else happens. That would take us out. Jesus speaks of something different here. Something different than that. Jesus says that there is a purpose. And we will, the purpose is to testify. And we will be given a reason to testify. And what will we be testifying about? Now some people believe that we are in the end times right now. That you can see signs all around. And there probably are some signs. You know what? The people in Jesus' time believed that as well, that they were in the end time. And that was a long time ago. And yes, we are in the end times because we know it's not the beginning times. And really, in reality, we really don't know what time we're living in. And Jesus told us in other scriptures that we need to be careful not to speculate when that end time will, will come. That's not for us to think about. But at whatever time we are in, we are told that we do indeed have a purpose. Our purpose is to testify. We show people who we are by how we live and how we worship, who we follow. It says in our passage today that Jesus will give us words and wisdom that none of your opponents or our opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You know, some of us fear that we don't have the words to tell people about God, to tell people about Christ, that that's the pastor's job to do. Well, you know what, that is true. It is my job. But let me tell you, as a man who went to seminary and who has looked at Hebrew and the Greek language in those scriptures, that it is your job too. It is our job to do that. So what kind of things need to come down in your life? What kind of towers that you might be worshiping, that you might think are beautiful? How are you testifying with your life? How is the church testifying? Because I will say it again, what really matters is not what the church looks like or what our identity is. What matters is is the kingdom of God. And how are we showing it? In our church, in our churches, and our everyday life. We can live, we could really live if we wanted to, like K Sera Sera. Whatever will be, will be. Or we could live with a purpose, showing the world who we belong to. And by doing that, by our endurance, 
Scripture tells us, he will gain our souls. Let's pray. Lord God, as we think about the future, help us to live with a purpose, knowing that our purpose is to testify who we belong to. And some of us in our world will testify that we don't belong to you. But help us that do belong to you really testify that we are God's. We are God's people. That we have a purpose. That we can be, jo- we can be filled with your spirit of joy and hope and peace. And live like things really matter. We just pray this in your most blessed name this morning. Amen. Let us respond to the word this morning with the Apostles' Creed. Stand if you're so able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Actually, we're going to stand again <laughs> and sing This Is My Father's World. As we go to the Lord in prayer today, let me draw your attention to those that we are remembering in prayer found in our bulletin. Let me highlight a few of those. Um, I was able to see Lois Minnick this week, and she is doing quite well, um, well, better than the last couple times that I have visited her. Marlene Richards and I went up to visit her this week and found her doing um, in good spirits and um, doing well. 
So, but we continue to pray for her as she is um, in Jamestown, New York, at a nursing home. Um, any other things that we need to be praying for? We need to continue to pray for Carrie Nye, uh, who is uh, failing as we pray today um, with his battle um, against cancer. And we want to be praying for he and for um, Brad and, and, and Megan Beers um, as they deal with their family um, and all that situation. Any other things that we need to be lifting up that may not be in the bulletin? Dick. Oh, Nancy Gibbons, we've been praying for you, and we're glad that you're back today. Cool. We'll continue to pray, though, for you as you recover from your stint in the hospital. Any other things to pray for? Uh, Barb's family. Del. If you did not hear that, we want to be praying for Trisha Cabani, who is a pastor's daughter, a former pastor's daughter. She has a, um, is severely ill with cancer, and we're sending her a card, um, and it's in the back of the church. And if you sign it, Dell is going to ma mail it for us. Well, let's go to Lord in prayer this morning as we pray. Lord God, as we think about our future, we know that the things of this world will come down. We know that there will be times of peril. There will be times of um, destruction. There will be times of persecution. But Lord, we thank you that you are God in the midst of it and that you will protect us. And even if we do leave, l lose our lives, you're going to be taking us to a, a much, much better place for the things that we consider beautiful of this world fail in comparison to what's waiting ahead. Lord, we want to lift up those who are struggling this morning as we pray. We want to pray for Terry Nye. Uh, we pray for him to, to receive the, the peace and the comfort and the, the joy that you can only bring. We pray, we pray for uh, Trish Cabani. We pray for her as she is uh, struggling as well, and we lift her up and her family. Lord, the, you, you know what's going on in their personal lives, and we just pray for them. Lord, we also thank you for the work that you're doing in Lois Minnick's life and um, for her well-being. We thank you for the opportunity to visit her and for the joy she shared with us. We also thank you for Nancy being back with us today, and Thank you for the, the healing work that you are doing in her body, but we pray for continual healing there. Lord, there are many people on our list that we want to lift up to you um, this morning. For people who are not feeling the best, for people who are in failing bodies, we just lift them up. We thank you for the opportunities of ministry that are coming up. We pray for our youth group tonight. <clears throat> We thank you for that opportunity. We thank you for the opportunity of our Thanksgiving community dinner this week. And we pray for that too. We pray that those experiences would communicate that we would be able to have our purpose of testifying who you are through those experiences. And we thank you for the way that you continually testify who you were while you were with us. And we also thank you for the way that you taught us how to pray. And we pray that prayer that you taught us so long ago this morning, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
Let's prepare our hearts for the morning offering. Lord, with this offering, help us to testify who you are to our community so that those of the future may come to know you as well. We just pray this simply in your name. Amen.
So may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all your days. Amen. Amen.